Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Reading for Vocabulary. We're on Unit 4. We're talking about world connections. Lesson 10 is talking about going places. How about you? Have you traveled in your life or have you moved your house from one place to another? Maybe you uh, grew up in one city and moved and lived in another city. Well, we're going to focus on the history of transportation, right? Because human beings have been around for a very long time and human beings like to travel, right? It's part of who we are. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about in this lesson. But first, let's learn some vocabulary words. The first word we're going to go over, wow, this is very exciting, right? It's going very fast. Of course, this is what kind of thing? It's a long vehicle, a long, it's very long vehicle that travels on rails. These are rails. What do we call that? Of course you know it's called a train, right? Korea has a very good train system, KTX, right? The bullet train, it's very fast. You can go from Seoul to Busan in three and a half hours. Very good. Okay, but that's a train. Okay, the second word here, anything, anything that carries people over land, water, or sea. Of course, we can see a plane here. We talked about train, but we're talking about anything. It could be a plane, a train, a car, a boat, all of these things. What do we call these things? They carry people over land, water, or sea. Carry people anywhere in the world. We call this system transportation. Whew, long word. So. Transportation, four syllables. Let's say it a little bit more quickly though, like a native speaker. Transportation, transportation, okay? Transportation, okay, that is basically anything that carries people from one place to another. But transportation is usually thought of as a system, right? Or uh, a type of uh, vehicle, right? It's a type, for example, a train is a type of transportation. A plane is a type of transportation. So when we talk about transportation, we're not talking about one vehicle or a specific vehicle. We're talking about any, uh, all types of vehicles, anything, okay? So, but if you're going to talk about specific type, then say boat or car, train or plane. But you could also, it, to use transportation, you can say transportation is very good in Korea, for example. The transportation system is very good in Korea. Okay, next one. Three, whoa, what's this? This looks a little strange, but if you look carefully and closely, you get it pretty quickly. Of course, you find this in your car. If your family has a car, of course, probably do, uh, you open the hood of the car and you can see this. This is what makes the car go. It's a machine that provides power. It provides power to your car right? It's called an engine. But engines, of course, are also in trains. They're in planes and they're in automobiles, right? Planes, trains, and automobiles, boats, all types of transportation. Not all types. A bicycle is a type of transportation, but it doesn't have an engine, right? So you think of the powerful types of transportation, they have an engine. But other types of transportation that are slower, we use our, our power, human power, or animal power, horses and carts, right? But most modern transportation uses an engine. Okay, next one. Well, this is very interesting, it's a very kyupji uh, car, right? A very cute car. Useful and sensible. So this is a useful car. It's sensible because it doesn't waste a lot of gas. It only uses enough gas that it needs. So we say something is practical. It's practical. It's enough to get the job done. We don't waste time. We don't waste money. Uh, it's practical, okay? Useful and sensible. Next one, a great achievement. Something that is a great achievement, we say it is a feat. Not your pal, right? Pal anio, not feet, F-E-E-T, but feet, F-E-A-T. Pronunciation is the same as feet, right? But 
Feat means achievement. If you have done something spectacular, you have done something great, maybe you won an award, that was a great feat. You accomplished an impressive feat. F-E-A-T, not nemse, right? Pal, not, not that, not, okay, not feet. Okay, next one. Six, to move through the sky on the wind. So birds do this. Some kinds of airplanes do this. People can do this too if they have a certain device. Um, uh, it's called a hang glider. But anyway, when birds are doing this, they're not moving their wings. They just have their wings out and the wind helps them keep in the air and they're just floating. They're like floating around. We say they are soaring, to soar. Some types of airplanes, right? They don't have an engine. They go up in the air. They're being pulled up in the air by another plane and then they're released. And then they just kind of glide down back to the earth. They're soaring through the air, to soar. A vehicle that travels through the air, I was talking about it already quite a lot. I've mentioned it already many times. Of course, it is an, a plane or an aircraft. So remember, we can say airplane or just plane. We can also say aircraft. It's a vehicle that travels through the air. Now, aircraft, many different types of aircraft, right? A hang glider, you can say, is a type of aircraft, but it's not a plane. Uh, a hang glider, right? That's where the people get in, they just have a bar and there's this big uh, uh, wing above them and they just float, they soar through the air, right? That's a type of aircraft. But mostly we're talking about planes. Uh, mostly when we talk about aircraft, we're talking about planes. And of course, passenger planes, fighter jet planes, uh, small stunt planes. Uh, there's many different types of planes. Okay. Hot water in the air. When you cook tea, or when you cook tea, when you make tea, when you make, don't say cook tea, when you make tea, uh, of course you want the water to boil, right? So hot water will come out in the air once it's boiling, and we call that steam. Be careful, right? Steam, apayo, right? Be careful because steam can be dangerous, right? Of course, in this situation, maybe not so dangerous, but in a factory or something, be careful, right? Because there's a lot of steam. There can be a lot of steam. Nine, to make disappear and then appear in a different place. To make something disappear and then disappear here and then make it appear in another place. So basically I move it from here to there very quickly. This is not real. We only see this in science fiction movies nowadays. Of course, Star Trek was very famous for their what? Teleporter, teleporter, okay? They could teleport people uh, from their ship to the uh, planet down below, okay? So that's called teleport. That's not real. It's only in our imagination. Nobody can do this yet. People are trying to figure out how to do it, but it's not possible to do it now. Okay, teleport. Okay, next one. A vehicle that can travel into space. What is that? Of course, you're very excited about reading about these and hearing about these. Astronauts will go into space on these vehicles. They are also a type of aircraft, but we call them a rocket rocket, okay? So a rocket is a type of aircraft, right? We saw that word before, many types of aircraft. Mostly we talk about planes, but rocket is also another type of aircraft. But this one goes into space, okay? Remember I was talking to you about this one before? I wrote it on the uh, uh, board. Uh, a one or two person aircraft with no engine. It is a hang glider. I taught that to you before. This is a very interesting, very exciting aircraft, right? It's a little dangerous, right? Uh, if you do this, you have to be an adult to do this and you have to have a lot of training to be able to do this. But this is very amazing, isn't it? It would be really cool to be able to do this. And this is a one or two person, two people can sometimes fly in it. There's no engine, you jump off a mountain and you fly, you soar through the air. Next one, a thing that spins and pulls air or water. So on older airplanes, on older airplanes, they, we have this, this is called a propeller, 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 propeller. That might be a little difficult to pronounce. Propeller, propeller. 
And these are, of course, on older airplanes, right? Nowadays, most airplanes use jet engines. Jets. Most airplanes are jets nowadays, especially the big airplanes that you travel to another country, they use jets. But smaller airplanes and older airplanes, they'll use propellers. Okay, next one. A basic vehicle with four wheels. Right before when I was talking about engines, right? Not all transportation has engines. There's no engine on this vehicle, right? But what do we call this? We call this a carriage. 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 Now you may know about carriages from fairy tales, right? When you read the fairy tale about Cinderella, right? A carriage comes to take her to the ball, and then the carriage comes, is supposed to bring her back home before it turns into the little mice and the pumpkin, right? So we know about carriages from fairy tales. Carriages were very common hundreds of years ago before the invention of the car. Rich people would ride around in carriages. Okay, a fuel that powers cars. Of course, if you are with your mom or dad, you're driving around, they have to stop at a juyuso, right? A gas station once in a while. So a fuel that powers car is gas, gas station. In Korean, you say juyuso, right? But we say gas station in America. In England, in Britain, they say petrol, petrol. So British English, they will say, oh, I need some petrol for my car. But Americans don't use the word petrol. They, if you say petrol in America, people will know what you're talking about, but they hardly ever use that word. So they think, well, that's kind of strange. Did you learn English in Britain, right? So most Americans will say just gas. I need gas for my car. Let's go to a gas station. British people will say, we need to get some petrol. Let's go to a petrol station, okay? So gas. Next one, a large balloon filled with hot air that carries people. Okay, this is also very exciting. That would be fun to ride in, right? Uh, of course, it's a safer than a hang glider, right? You don't have to have as much training. You just have to be with a person who knows what he's doing or she's doing. So what do we call this? We call this a hot air balloon. And of course, we see all the words there, hot air balloon. Right? It's a big balloon, not a balloon that you hold in your hand at a birthday party. No, this is really big. And it uses hot air to go up in the sky. Right? So it's a hot air balloon. Okay, last one. Having to do with sunlight. So these are becoming more and more popular these days, right? This is like future technology. Maybe the future will depend on this type of technology. What are these? These are like panels, panel, right? A panel is just a flat surface, right? But these are what kinds of panel? They have to do with sunlight. We call them solar panels. But this word here is an adjective, and we use that word in front of anything that uses sunlight. Solar panel, solar car, solar uh, whatever, okay? Uh, this is an adjective that we use in front of nouns to describe that they have to do with sunlight, or usually nowadays that they get their energy from the sun. Solar panel gets its energy from the sun, from sunlight. Okay, those are our words. Let's go over the exercises for that vocabulary. The first problem here is after a hot shower. Ooh, hot shower is good in the morning on a winter day, isn't it? Okay, a hot shower, the bathroom air fills with what? So of course, if it's winter, you're taking a hot shower in the morning or at night before you go to bed. Well, actually, that yeah, may, may, may make you go to sleep. But anyway, in the bathroom, you notice, I can't see, right? If you have glass, you have to wipe the glass. Why? Because the water is hot. It gets in the air. And what do we call that? Is it gas? Is it smoke? Is it steam? Or is it soap? <laughs> okay? We might say, oh, it's smoke. No, it's not smoke. Smoke is from a fire, right? This is water, water vapor. It's not gas. It's not soap, right? Be careful. Don't get soap in your eyes. What is it? Of course, we know it's steam. 
right? Hot air, uh, sorry, water that gets very hot, hot water, if it's very hot, it will become steam. And of course, when you're taking a hot shower, there's a lot of steam in the bathroom. If you go to a sauna, there's a lot of steam. People like it. It's healthy for them. Okay. Three, a hammer is not very beep for cooking food. So we're talking about something that is useful or sensible to use for something else. Do we use a hammer to cook food? A hammer we use to pound a nail into wood. You don't use a hammer for cooking food. That's crazy, right? So how do we use that though as an adjective? A hammer is not very beep, is not very what for cooking food. So it's not. A, silly, B, practical, C, big, D, useless. Remember the word not here. If we said a hammer is not very silly, you might choose silly because, oh, that's silly to use a hammer for cooking food, but we're using not. So not silly means that it's okay, but that's not right. A hammer is not okay to use for cooking food. So silly doesn't work. What about practical? Not practical. Ah, not practical. Practical means useful, sensible, right? A hammer is not, pr not practical, it's not useful, it's not sensible. So that's our answer, B. Is not big, that doesn't fit. And useless, remember, not, not useless. If we got rid of not, we said a hammer is useless for cooking food, that's okay. If we said a hammer is silly for cooking food, that would be okay but we're using not, so the adjective has to be appropriate. Not practical for cooking food. It's not useful, okay? Okay, next one, <clears throat> five. We took the beep, it was faster than the car or bus and cheaper than a plane. So, that's interesting. This uh, problem kind of eliminates choices for you. So, you took something. In other words, you took some type of transportation. We take transportation. You can take a plane, you can take a boat, you can take a taxi, you can take a car, whatever. So we take some type of transportation, <clears throat> but what kind of transportation? Well, we know what it's not. We know it's not a car, not a bus, and we know it's not a plane, okay? But we also know a couple more clues. It was faster than. Faster than a car, faster than a bus. Not faster than a plane, just cheaper than a plane. Interesting. So those are the clues. Not a car, not a bus, not a plane. Faster than a car, faster than a bus, and cheaper. Not as expensive as a plane. What could it be? Our choices are horse, rocket, train, or bicycle. Well, let's look at them. A horse. Is a horse faster than a car or a bus? No, of course not. Cars are much faster than horses. They can go much longer distances and much quicker. So it's not a horse. A rocket, <laughs> okay, faster than a car or bus? Yeah, a rocket is faster than a car or bus. Is it cheaper than a plane? No, rockets are really, really expensive, okay? You have to be a millionaire to go into space on a rocket if you're gonna pay for it. Okay, what about a train? A train is faster than a car or bus, that's true. It's cheaper than a plane. Yeah, train tickets are usually a lot cheaper than plane tickets. That's our answer, train. We took the train faster than a car or bus and cheaper than a plane. It's not faster than a plane, it's just cheaper than a plane. And bicycle, we know bicycle's not faster than a car or bus, so that's not the answer either. Okay, number seven. Rockets are the fastest beep in the world. Rockets are the fastest what? Our choices are trains, B, aircraft, C, flight, D, steam. So right away we see that flight doesn't work because flight is not a type of vehicle. Neither is steam. Steam is not a type of vehicle. That leaves us with trains or aircrafts. Is a rocket a type of train? No, it's not a type of train, it's a type of aircraft. So rockets are the fastest aircraft in the world. Remember I said before, aircraft, there are many, many different types of aircraft. Planes, hang gliders, and also rockets. Okay, well that wraps up the vocabulary section for this unit. Let's take a short break, we'll come back and look at the reading. Don't go away. 
Okay, welcome back. Let's go over the reading together. The first passage here is: In the modern world, it's easy to travel. Planes fly us across oceans in less than a day. We speed between cities in cars, buses, and trains. Okay, this is an introductory. This is part of the introduction to the reading passage, right? The first sentence is kind of a general statement about transportation, right? In the modern world, so we're talking about you know nowadays. In the modern world, it's easy to travel. So we think, well, maybe this passage is about the ease. Uh, of traveling nowadays, we might think that, but we have to read a little bit more to figure this out. But anyway, in the modern world, it's easy to travel. Then we have some examples of that, right? For the first example is planes. Planes fly us across oceans in less than a day. Less than a day, we can fly across the Pacific Ocean or the Atlantic Ocean, right? So that's really convenient. It's easy. We speed. Speed is also used as a verb. It means to go very quickly. We speed between cities in cars, buses, and trains. So in the modern world, it's easy to travel. We have two examples here. Okay, let's continue here. We are so used to traveling like this that we don't often think about it. It wasn't always this simple to get around. Transportation has changed a lot. In the past 100 years. Okay, so what these two passages—the first one, the first slide, and then this slide—is this the second slide—is、uh, doing is introducing us to the topic, right? The first of all, we hear that transportation nowadays is very easy. We hear a couple of examples. Then we see we are so used to, so used to doing. We are so used to traveling. I am so used to brushing my teeth. I am so used to watching television at night. Right? If you're, if there's a habit that you do, right, that you do again and again and again, you don't even think about it anymore. Right? The first time you do it, you have to think about it. Second time, third time, but you do it so many times, soon you don't even think about it anymore. We don't often think about it. We just think that it's always there. It's not special anymore. To be able to fly from Korea to America in one day—that's amazing. If you told somebody a hundred years ago about that, they would think, "Wow, that's that's really impressive." Not many people do it. Many thousands of people do it nowadays, right? Millions of people fly every year. We don't think about it. It's normal. So. It wasn't always this simple to get around, right? It wasn't always. I just said a hundred years ago, if you told somebody about that, they would have thought, "Wow, that's very strange. It's very unusual, right?" And in fact, a hundred years ago, they say it's impossible, right? They did, they couldn't do that a hundred years ago, right? Nineteen fourteen, nineteen, you know, the early nineteen hundreds, people didn't fly like that. It wasn't always this simple. Transportation has changed. A lot in the past 100 years. This here, that's our main sentence of the passage. That's our topic sentence. This passage is going to be about how transportation has changed. Okay, so be careful, right?、In、the first slide we saw,、uh, it's it's you know modern transportation is very easy to use. That's not the topic sentence. This is. So sometimes reading passages will say a general statement and then give you some examples. As a way of introducing what the topic of the passage is, and that's what's going on here. Okay, so next, now we're going to read about how transportation has changed in the past 100 years. So, before cars, before cars, right? Before cars were invented, people rode in carriages pulled by horses. In fact, cars were first called horseless carriages. The first car was made in 1672, but used a steam engine and didn't go very fast at all. Interesting. Okay, so this passage is talking about the invention of cars, right? Cars were invented, you know, well, they were invented a long time ago, but they weren't really 
uh, didn't really become popular until the early 1900s. I didn't know that before I read this passage. 1672? That's a long, long time ago. Usually when people think about the invention of the car, they think about Henry Ford and the, the Model T in 1905 when uh, Henry Ford started mass producing cars, right? But wow, almost, uh, you know, 250 years before that, the first car was invented. That's a long time. But we don't hear about it that much. Why? Because it used a steam engine. It wasn't practical, right? It didn't go very fast at all. It's steam engine, very big, and a lot of energy is needed to make it go. So probably people didn't use it that often, right? So before cars, but so before the cars, at that time, people rode in carriages. They were pulled by horses. In fact, cars were first called horseless carriages. That's interesting, right? We don't call them horseless carriages now because it's not normal for us to use horses. But a long time ago, people, the normal thing was to use horses. So if you discover, you see a vehicle moving, there's no horses, people were surprised. Where are the horses, right? So they're horseless carriages, right? Now, of course, we just call them automobiles or cars. Cars is much more common than saying automobile. And that's very interesting, 1672, the first car. Okay. Cars didn't become popular until the 1900s. I was talking about with Henry Ford, right? 1905, the assembly line. Okay. Nowadays, cars use gas, electric, and even solar-powered engines. They are much faster and also more dangerous. Okay, so this is continuing the idea of cars. Cars was probably one of the greatest inventions, the bi probably the, the biggest uh, step forward in the history of transportation because almost everybody has a car. Almost everybody knows how to drive a car. Cars are the main type of transportation that most people in the world uh, use to get from place to place, you know, because they can take you short distances in your town, in your state, in your neighborhood, or they can take you long distances also to another country, for example. But they're very uh, ubiquitous. They're everywhere, right? Cars are everywhere. But they didn't become popular until the 1900s. Nowadays, now, these uh, in modern times, cars use gas, electricity. We see electric cars. We also see hybrid. Hybrid car is a car that uses gas and electric together, okay? Now, sometimes, though, there are solar-powered cars. Those are not common, right? They look like this. Can, do you have a car like this? Have you ever seen a car like this? Probably not. These are still experimental. These are like the cars, the steam engine uh, cars in 1672, aren't they? A hundred years from now, people will look back and say, oh yeah, they had solar-powered cars back in 2010, but they weren't very popular, right? Maybe in a hundred years, they'll be popular. Everybody will be driving them. They'll be very interesting, won't it? So you can see these things kind of repeat throughout history. Okay, they are much faster. Well, uh, cars, they use gas, electricity, and solar-powered engines are much faster nowadays than they were in the 1900s, right? The 1900s, right, the cars didn't go very fast. Maybe they went uh, f top speed 40 kilometers an hour was top speed, usually probably only 20 kilometers an hour, right? But because cars nowadays are much faster, they can go, you know, some cars, sports cars can go 200 kilometers per hour, right? Very fast. Um, but they're more dangerous, of course. The faster you go, the more dangerous it is. So be careful. Even on your bicycle or your skateboard, the faster you go, the more dangerous it is. So be careful. Okay. So we talked about cars. Let's move on to another type of transportation. The first aircraft wasn't a plane, it was a balloon. In 1783, a hot air balloon carried a person through the sky for the first time. It was amazing, but it wasn't very practical. Okay, so we move from cars, now we're talking about aircraft. And remember, I said there are many types of aircraft. The most common is planes, but we also saw hang glider and rocket. Another type, hot air balloon, a balloon. The first balloon flight, right, 1783. The first person to fly in a balloon did so 
in 1783. That's a long time ago, right? Uh, the rest of the uh, uh, 1700s, the entire 1800s and 1900s, balloons have been around. Hot air balloons have been around since 1783, but they aren't very practical. So hot air balloons didn't become like a very popular means of transportation. Why not? Well, the balloon went wherever the wind blew it. <laughs> It wasn't until the 1900s that people achieved controlled flight. So the balloon wasn't very popular. Why? Because it went wherever the wind blew it. So for example, if you're in Seoul and you wanted to go to Busan in a hot air balloon and the wind was blowing the wrong way, <laughs> sorry, you're going with the wind. You can't make the balloon go against the wind or across the wind. You can't do that. So balloons were not practical. You could only use a balloon to go where the wind took you, where the wind blew it. So it wasn't until the 1900s that people achieved controlled flight. Control means you can control where you're going, okay? So hot air balloons, you can control up and down, but that's it. You can't control the direction, right? It wasn't until the 1900s that people could control the direction in which they could fly. Okay, now let's take a look at a short video. This is an interesting uh, picture right here. Yeah, what's going on? We see a couple of girls on the street and they're walking along. Just a typical day. But do you notice something unusual in this picture? Look over here. What is that? Is that some kind of spacecraft? No, it's a car. It's a pretty cool car. Oh, there it is. Now, what kind of car is that? <laughs> it's very much different from all the other cars on the road. You see the solar panels on the top? That, of course, is a solar-powered car. Pretty amazing. Of course, everybody's looking at it. They're like, wow, what is that? Everybody on the street walking by is looking at it. It looks a lot different from the other cars on the road. Of course, it's not very practical nowadays. You can't take this to Costco and put all your groceries in the back. There's no trunk. There's no space. There's only space for one person to sit in, and they're very tight space, right? So it's like I said before. This car is like the steam engine car in 1672. Right? It's the first invention. But as we know, as time goes by, things get better and better. And who knows, maybe uh, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now, this type of car will change to be bigger and people will be able to uh, ride in them with their family or with their groceries. They'll become more practical. Maybe 100 years from now, we'll only be driving solar powered cars. Be pretty amazing, won't it? Okay. Okay, let's continue. We're, now let's come back again. We're talking about aircraft. Okay. The Wright brothers. Maybe you've heard of these two guys, the Wright brothers, right? They flew the first airplane in 1903. 1903. It had wooden propellers and flew only 120 feet. Even though it was a short flight, it was a remarkable feat. Their success let the world know that controlled flight was possible. Okay, so the, we're talking about the history, the beginning of air transportation, the beginning of, of controlled aircrafts. Okay, before we had balloons, but they were not controlled, right? So now here's a new type of aircraft, right? It is a plane. And the Wright brothers flew the first airplane in 1903. Now, a lot of history books won't tell you this, but a lot of different countries were competing. They were very close to flying themselves. The French were very close also to having an airplane that could fly. They were just a few years behind the Wright brothers. Many countries around the world were, of course, very interested in trying to get the first aircraft. The Wright brothers were not acting alone. They had many competitors, okay? But uh, the Wright brothers, they had wooden propellers. Remember, propellers are the things that spin and make aircraft move through the air. They flew only 120 feet. That's not very far. How far is 120 feet? That's about 40 meters, right? If I'm gonna do a rough conversion from, from uh, English system to metric system. Okay, it's about 120 feet. Okay, even though it was a short flight, very short, not very far, just 40 meters, right? They could walk that, but they flew it. It was a remarkable feat. Remember, not 
Pal, <laughs> an achievement. It was a remarkable achievement. Their success let the world know that controlled flight was possible. So that's the interesting thing. When inventors uh, do something, you may think, oh, only 40 meters, who cares? But that's not the important thing. The important thing is that they could do it, right? And so the next time they do it, they'll go further and further. And as we know, as technology improves, things get better and better. Just give it some time. Okay. Air travel has come a long way since the Wright brothers. We send people to the moon in rockets. Airplanes carry hundreds of people at once. Hang gliders soar through the sky like birds. So that's what I was talking about. Since the Wright brothers, 1903, they showed the world that you can fly. So since then, we have come a long way. That's a common expression in English. You've come a long way means you've shown a lot of progress. You've, you've improved very, very much. You've come a long way since the Wright brothers. So what are some examples? We see one example, send people to the moon in rockets in the 1960s, right? Uh, America sent astronauts to the moon. That's an incredible feat. They haven't repeated it since. Hmm. Okay, but anyway, uh, people to the moon. That's one example. Airplanes carry hundreds of people at once, right? So you're on an international flight to America or to Europe, right? Uh, hundreds of people are on the plane at one time. Hang gliders soar through the sky like birds. That's your third example. So we have three examples of how air travel has progressed a long way since the Wright brothers. And we still have big dreams. So we haven't stopped, right? Those are three impressive examples, but we still have dreams to do even more, right? Can you imagine traveling to distant planets, going to Mars, or going to one of the moons of Jupiter, right? Or teleporting from Korea to America in less than a second. Oh, I wish I could do that. I hate flying on the airplane for nine or 10 hours, and then again, getting on another plane for another three hours. Oh, it's terrible, right? Um, so if we could teleport, but we can't do this yet. These are in the future, right? So we have big dreams. Usually dreams are talking about the future. We can't do it now. We can't go to distant planets. We're trying. People say they're trying to get to the Mars is next. Uh, but teleporting, that's just science fiction. Nobody knows if that is even possible. Okay, so these are some dreams that people have about transportation in the future. For early people, space flight was just a dream, but we did it. Maybe our modern dreams are possible too. So even though those are just dreams, it's not possible now, what they're saying here is that for early people a long time ago, they never would have thought of space flight. It was a dream, a fantasy. But we did it. In the 1960s, humankind did it. They traveled to the moon through space. So maybe our modern dreams are possible too. So right now we can think, oh, teleportation, that's a fantasy, it's a dream. But maybe it's possible. We have to keep trying. Okay. Okay, let's take a, a look at a, a video of a rocket taking off. Here come, here's the ignition. Lift off. We have lift off. And it's, of course, taking off into space. And of course, this is a reality now, but who knows, in the future it might become more common. And we might take a rocket to a distant planet someday. Okay, let's go over the uh, comprehension questions. This story is about what? A, how we travel. B, where we travel. C, why we travel. D, when we travel. So, what was this passage about? This passage was about kind of the history of transportation, the development of different types of transportation. And the development of different types of transportation, planes, trains, cars, things like that, talks about how we travel. Not where, we didn't talk about where, we didn't talk about why, and we didn't talk about when. We talked about how do we travel. By car, by steam power, you know, uh, do we fly through the air? How do we travel? Okay, next one. Hot air balloons aren't practical. They are not practical because they, why? Why aren't hot air balloons practical? I talked about this quite a bit. Because when you went up, could you control where you went? No, the wind took you where uh, it wanted to go. So, are too fast? No. Carry people? No, that's, that's practical, that's not impractical. 
are hard to control. Aha, that's the answer. Hot air balloons aren't practical because they are hard to control. You can't control them, right? We talked about those were aircraft that were not controlled. Controlled aircraft didn't come until about the 1900s. Okay, not that they are too old, that doesn't make sense. So hot air balloons are not practical because they are hard to control. You can't control the direction. Number three, the first airplane. What did the first airplane do? We have verbs, right? What was it or what did it do? A, flew for 120 minutes, was flown with wooden wings, flew in 1903, made the world forget about flight. Okay, so what did the first airplane do? Did it fly for 120? Don't be confused because it wasn't 120 minutes, it was 120 feet. They're trying to trick you there, so you have to read carefully, right? Was flown with wooden wings. Ah, again, they're trying to trick you. Not wooden wings, it said wooden propellers. Propellers, ah, those test, those test makers are being tricky, right? They're trying to trick you. Was flown with wooden propellers, so that's not right. Uh, flew in 1903. What was the date of the Wright brothers' first flight? It was 1903, so that's correct. The first airplane flew in 1903. And it didn't make the world forget about flight, it made the world think. Whoops, think about flight. So that one's wrong. The only true one is flew in 1903. Okay, last one, number four. Traveling to distant planets. A is simple and practical. B is nobody's dream. C could be possible someday. D is hopeless. What do we talk about dreams? We said that they could become possible someday. So traveling to distant planets could be possible someday. Who knows? Whatever we dream about may be possible in the future. Remember, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, what we're doing now, those people back then, they could not imagine it. They couldn't even dream what we do now. So we, it's very difficult for us to think about or, or uh, think that something isn't possible because things that we don't even think about now will probably be possible 200, 300 years from now. Okay, that about wraps it up. We'll see you guys next time. Take care.